Let me show you the components to the Maker Select Plus 3D printer that my son got me for a Christmas present. Just learning about it, so I don't really know what all these parts are yet, but I've just laid them out so you can get a look at what was in the box. And uh, this box over here contains some extra PLA filament. Um, there was some green filament that came with it. And so we'll give it a try on setting this thing up. First thing the instructions tell me to do is stand the tower frame up and then cut this zip tie that holds the extruder. So I've done that. And then take this tower frame, insert this into it. And there's some holes down here on the sides. Line those with holes in this tower frame and use these hex screws down here to put them in place. So we're going to do that now. If I'd had a long shafted uh, hex wrench, that would have made putting those screws in a lot easier. Now the directions say to turn it on its left side, put one from the inside, and turn it on its right side, do the same thing. So we'll give that a Well, go. that step of unscrewing a, or putting a screw in from the inside of the, the base doesn't seem possible with this because look at this unit. There is no way to get inside the base the way it's, it's got a cover on it. So I'm just going to skip that step. Well, the next step is to use a carpenter's level, ensure that the <clears throat> surface is level and that the uh, these rods here are level. What I've found is the front of this is not exactly level, but this table is, this frame is, and these rods are fairly level, so I'm going to leave it as is. According to the directions, the next step is take one of the plastic nuts off this spool holder and thread it into this, put it back on. There's actually only one plastic nut on this, so I'm just going to go ahead and do it. The next step is to attach the uh, spool holder bracket here and um, to the uh, tower stand or tower frame. Up here, a couple of screws. We're going to do that next. The next step is to cut this zip tie right here and take each of these cables, which is numbered A, B, or identified as A, B, C, and D. A goes into here underneath, B goes down here. C, there's a cable on the other side over here for C, and D goes there. So we're going to do that now. Okay, the directions now say to squeeze the uh, this build platform to a minimum and tighten up these knurled nuts. We're going to do that now. The next thing we're supposed to do is make sure this power switch is in the off position, the O side depressed, which it is. And we take our cord here, plug it in, turn it on. Okay, turn it back around, hopefully everything is still level. The manual says press the tool and the home all button. There isn't any home all button here. So the old Googling, I think it's under system here. And I'm assuming that home XYZ, which would be all I'm assuming is it. So we'll press that. That doesn't sound good, but it says to turn the power switch off, and now I should be able to move it around, which it looks like that's the case. The manual, the manual says um, 
to use an anti-static wrist strap because this instrument is sensitive to static. So I bought this off of Amazon. I just arbitrarily picked one. I was checking to make sure I had continuity. I noticed that it's got a fairly high resistance in the wrist strap and also in the cord. So anyway, I've got it hooked up back here and grounded. I checked ground, so I think that'll be okay. Next step is to check the nozzle height relative to the build platform. They say to use a piece of paper. I'm going to use a little post-it note. It should accomplish the same thing. We'll give that a try here. Checking the nozzle, which is a little hard to see, but it's back right there, it looks like, the extruder nozzle. And if it's too high off of the paper, you adjust these knobs here, these little knurl knobs, release them, platform will come up, tighten them, and it'll go down. So I'm going to do that here, and we'll see how that goes. I believe I got that nozzle height relative to the build platform adjusted right, but it's almost pretty much all the way open on most of these knurls here. I've got a uh, spool of PLA, polylactic acid filament, loaded on top there. That didn't come with the package that was purchased separately. What came with the package was a small roll like this. I decided to start out with a big one so I wouldn't have to worry about reloading it. And then uh, the next direction, say turn this thing back on, heat that build platform up, and then we'll go from there. Okay, per the directions, I've got this anti-strap anti wrist strap on. I've got the instrument turned back on. And what it says to do is wait for it to initialize, uh, press the tools button, which I just did, and press the move button, which I just did. So just press the Z axis entry several times to raise, uh, press the plus button for the Z axis entry several times to raise it up about an inch above the platform. Let's see, there, Z. And one more time. That looks about right. Press the back button. Press the preheat button. We're going to preheat it for PLA. The extruder wasn't heating up. So I checked trace this cord down from the extruder and it was stuffed back up in up inside here I didn't even know it was there and actually this step was not in the paper instructions so I'm going to plug this in and hopefully the extruder will heat up yeah it's heating up now so that was not heating up at all it's nothing in the manual about this Butterfly being here, most likely they test printed that on there when they originally put this together. But what I'm going to do, based on Googling it, other people question the same thing. I'm just going to peel it off. Hopefully I can do this without tearing anything up. Okay, that's off of there. Okay, to load the filament into the extruder, first thing you have to do is cut these, a diagonal cut on the filament. And there's a little hole right there on top of it. If you can see that. Put that down in there. Then you push this down, feed it into it. And uh, I actually are, have already loaded this. But what we're going to do is um, you go down. Let's see if I can move this down without causing too much problem. See on the screen here, 
this e-axis you press the e-axis button plus to start feeding out of the extruder a little hard to see both on here but uh, we'll give it a try all right on the e-axis button you just press plus and it starts feeding Got it heated up. Remember, this is after you've heated up the extruder. We'll press it again. A little hard to see them here. It is feeding in. I believe it's feeding in though. Oh, yeah, now we got something coming out. It's gonna be a little hard to see. We'll take this out of the tripod. See it coming out of the nozzle. Push it again. It's coming out. Okay. I'm going to stop this till we look at our next step. Okay. Direction said to clean the melt coming out of the extruder. I did that. It says find the SD card that was in the package. I got that. It says insert it back over here. I tried inserting it what looks like right way up, didn't go, so I'm going to try putting it in what looks looks like upside down. But. Okay, now it says press the back button twice. I'll press print. Okay, now it's got different files here on each SD card. I don't see a name. We'll just pick one of them and see what it is. So I'm going to pick two. See if it's that thumb screw. Okay. We'll press continue. All right. It's moving. Position this over here a little bit might be a little easier to see. It's making something. We're printing the sample geocode file number two. I'm not even really sure what it is. I guess we'll find out. Hopefully you can see that. It's a little hard to see in there. Interesting to watch it work. Well, it's finally stopped. Not sure exactly how much time it took, but it took a while to finish printing this. And if you look, it's a chair. That wasn't in the G file, in the... Uh, manual that's interesting I'll have to get it off of there looks like the hardware works this was G code file 2 and the maker select plus uh, on the SD card I put in there it came with it it's interesting it's very light because it's basically hollow the way it was printed pretty neat fairly good resolution so we'll move on from here and figure out how to make a model and make our own design.